Whether you're an accounting manager who has just been told you're now managing the accounts payable function, or a seasoned pro who has been working in or managing the function for a while, there are a number of operational problems that do not get the headlines or attention they deserve. This leaves management and those new to the space wondering why their accounts payable function isn't more efficient than it is. By knowing what these issues are, and everyone, and I mean everyone, has them, you'll be able to do a better job. While this talk was originally designed for accounting managers getting ready to take over the management of the accounts payable function, experienced pros will also benefit from a thorough understanding of what these issues are. Make sure you stick around until the end when we discuss the one mistake that trips up that trips up experienced and newbies alike. So let's start off by discussing the special operational accounts payable issues. Accounts payable operational issue number one, the duplicate invoice issue. About 25% of all invoices received today in accounts payable are duplicates. The supplier has either mailed and emailed the invoice or they've emailed the invoice to numerous folks. Weeding them out takes time. Now, you may think, well, we'll just weed them out and we'll move right on, and, and that's fine. You, you probably will. But it is critical that you understand that this weeding out process takes time and effort and uses up some of your valuable resources. And number two, that occasionally uh, several of these duplicate invoices slip through and a duplicate payment gets made, and therefore you need to also focus on your duplicate payment uh, recovery efforts afterward. Okay. Accounts payable operational issue number two, um, which is related to the first one. Sometimes people say, well, you know, if we make a duplicate payment, not such a big deal. The vendor will return the duplicate payment. And the answer is maybe one out of a hundred of those suppliers will automatically return that duplicate payment. Most won't. Some will give you a vendor credit and that creates other problems and it takes a little bit of time to find those credits and then to use them. Um, and others just will silently pocket the money and, and move right along. So don't assume that your vendor are going to uh, help you solve that problem. Accounts payable operational issue number three. Criminals are focusing on accounts payable like never before. They figured out that that's where the money is and therefore they are targeting the staff in accounts payable to try and get them to pay them in, in, in erroneously. Therefore, it's important that your staff continually be updated on new frauds and new fraud protection routines. AP operational issue number four. And this, this is, I, in, to my way of thinking, it's a simple one. Of course, not everybody agrees with me. If you want to improve the morale of maybe 95% of your staff, find a way to let them work remotely from home at least one day a week. Most, but not, definitely not all, folks who work in accounts payable would love to work remotely and even allowing them to do it one day a week will raise morale. It's a simple thing to do and honestly I don't understand why 100% of companies out there aren't doing it. Now there are a few people who don't want to work remote and it won't help with them but overwhelmingly uh, folks want to do that. Accounts payable operational issue number five. Some suppliers know which of your staff they can manipulate into paying them early and trust me, when they figure out who those people are, they will take advantage of it. They'll call up and they'll wheedle and they'll say whatever they have to say to get your staff to pay them early. Now, you know, they may need the money and that's understandable, but your accounts payable staff works for your company. You don't want to pay them late, but you don't want to pay them early either. So if you're a new manager, you want to keep your eye on that. Accounts payable operational issue number six. Purchasers don't always approve invoices in a timely manner, and this makes it difficult for your accounts payable staff to get invoices paid on time. So if your suppliers are complaining that you're paying late, and you don't have a policy of paying late and you want to investigate and make sure that your AP operation is working efficiently, but again, they can't process those invoices until they get them back approved. So you may have to have some conversations with uh, purchase. AP operational issue number seven. This one kind of blows my mind, but it is what it is. Suppliers don't always respond to inquiries regarding discrepancies on their invoices in a timely manner, and this makes it difficult for you to pay them on time. So when your invoice processes are handling the invoices and they, they come across a discrepancy, they'll either call or email the supplier trying to get the matter resolved 
And if the supplier doesn't respond, then they can't process the invoice and they can't pay them. So then when the supplier complains, hey, you didn't pay me on time, you know, your response is, well, hey, you didn't respond on time. If you've responded to our inquiry, we would have been able to. This also, by the way, will sometimes make it difficult to earn those early payment discounts, which, you know, companies generally want. AP operational issue number eight. A good percentage of invoices have some sort of a discrepancy on them requiring manual intervention to get them processed. So even if you're using an automation solution, the automation solution may take care of some of your transactional work, but not all. And typically when there's a discrepancy either between the purchase order and the invoice or the receiving document, you need to have some sort of human intervention to get that matter um, addressed and handled properly. And you'd be surprised the number of invoices that they that require this. So while automation is great and you may think, well, we'll just automate and then you know we won't need our AP staff, it's not the case. Okay. AP operational issue number nine. ERP systems do not catch duplicate payments or duplicate invoices as often as you think despite the fact that most ERP systems have a, a feature that will not allow the same invoice number to be in, entered more than one time. And you think this would be the silver bullet that would stop all sorts of duplicate payments, but it's not. Yes, it does catch some of them, but number one, this assumes that the invoice number was entered correctly the first time, which is not a safe assumption. After all, if I was processing an invoice, I'd be more concerned that I got the dollar amount right and the purchase order number right, uh, less about the vendor's um, invoice number. So there's that issue. And also there's the issue that many processes, when they run into, you know, they enter the invoice number and the system says this invoice number has already been and entered, they fudge around it because they think, well, that was a mistake the last time. This is the right invoice. And then they had a space or a dot or something, and they force the invoice through. Ongoing problem, one that we all have. And accounts payable operational issue number 10. And we're going to have some uh, managerial issues also uh, that uh, many of us don't think about. But before I get to that, let's do AP operational issue number 10. Suppliers, amazingly, often leave critical pieces of information off, off an invoice, making it difficult for you to pay them on time. Now, to me, this, this is mind-blowing that they do this. But in conversations and in actually in surveys that AP now has done, with accounts payable staff, an uh, overwhelming number, a whopping number of them get a certain percentage of their invoices missing the information they need to get them paid to pay them on time. And so then they have to call or email the supplier. And as we've already discussed, suppliers don't always respond in a timely manner. Go figure. Um, now, as you may have noticed, automation, while it helps make accounts payable more efficient and effective, will not eliminate all these problems. And they certainly don't help with the unique managerial issues related to accounts payable, and we're going to take um, a look at, at several of them. But before we get to that, if you're getting any value from this talk, I would appreciate it if you give us a thumbs up. This lets me and YouTube know that you're getting some value from this, and we should produce more content like this for more people like you. Okay, let's talk about a few managerial issues. Uh, managerial issue number one, uniquely related to accounts payable, and maybe some other transactional jobs. Uh, finance and accounting jobs. Um, number one, it's the fear of losing their job to automation and uh, artificial intelligence, AI. Now, most of your staff won't say this, but they'll throw up all sorts of roadblocks when you try and implement new technology, when you start talking about AI. And the answer to this is to explain to them that uh, these are tools that will aid them being more efficient and effective in their job. They are not meant to replace their job. And so that if they they learn how to use them, they'll become more efficient and effective. And it's critical that they do so that if the time does come where the company needs to reduce staff, they're going to hold on to the people who can do the most for them. And the people who can do the most for them are people who know how to use these tools. Managerial issue number two, um, and the only other place you're going to have this is an AR, is many times you'll have invoice processes handling the same accounts year in and year out. And this is a good thing in that they come to know the account, they come to know the people on the other end of the account, and when there's a problem, then they can work it out and they, they, they have somebody to go to. This is all good news. The bad news, and it completely negates 
any of the good things that I was talking about is occasionally the two folks will become friendly, the AP person and the AR person, as we mentioned, and yet they help each other. And in fact, in this case, they help each other to defraud one or both of the organizations. They collude together. So you need to periodically move invoice processes to accounts, assuming you have enough processes to do that. And uh, managerial issue number three, and this revolves around mandatory vacations. Um, everybody who has anything to do with your money, and this includes your accounts payable staff, should be required to take five consecutive days off, during which time somebody else does their job. They shouldn't do it from home. And the feeling is if there's an ongoing fraud, the fraud will unravel in this period of time. Now, I understand that this can make it difficult if you have, uh, if you're only getting two weeks vacation, only giving 10 days vacation, and sometimes people will take two days here and three days here and a day here. And uh, while I understand that, you want to have this mandatory vacation policy. I'm going to tell you that both that and the moving the invoice processes, while they are recommended best practices, they are not widely used. I've had a number of accounts payable managers tell me is that their problem with vacation time isn't getting people to take them, it's that people want to take too much. But the trick here is those five consecutive days. At the beginning, we mentioned that there was a big mistake that many people made. Um, and it is so commonplace, it's painful, and it doesn't have to be. When accounting professionals take over accounts payable, they think, I know this stuff, how complicated can it be? They clearly don't realize all the problems that we've already been discussing. And then they get themselves into a boatload of trouble because as you know, or at least once you got become intimately involved with accounts payable, you will know accounts payable is all in the details. It's not a big picture issue. Yes, there are some big picture issues, but it is all in the detail. That's why a good understanding of the basic principles is critical. And while we have an hour video on this, which I'm going to put in the description, um, you can, we have a quick review in 17 fast-paced minutes, which you can watch right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Good luck.